welcome to another Founders Friday on the Glenn Beck program. Um, somebody asked me just before we went on the air um, how these shows are being rated. And I have to tell you, we didn't think anybody would watch. We thought, we'll give this a whirl, see if everybody uh, wants to watch it. They are wildly highly rated, and I thank you for watching. There is a hunger in America for the truth. And tonight, I think we're going to blow your mind. Um, you're going to have to ask yourself a couple of questions uh, by the end of the program. Why, why would our schools leave all of this history out? I mean, this is some of the, the, the greatest American story uh, that you've, you've ever heard. Why would, they, why would they do that? And it's everywhere. You just don't know where to look. If you take a look at the revolutionary paintings, the uh, paintings of revolutionary times, uh, here it is, it's a Boston Tea Party, Bunch of white guys, and then these people strangely looking like Indians, and they're not. Uh, but that's it. Not a lot of racial diversity. Um, if you watch movies, one a great, great movie. Uh, this is John Adams. You watch John Adams, and you don't see a lot of racial di diversity. I'm currently watching uh, Johnny Tremaine. Uh, this is a. Uh, I love this movie. I remember this growing up. I was watching it with my kids just last night, and I noticed there are a couple of uh, American Indians, uh, but you don't see any African Americans unless they're slaves. They will show people as slaves, but that's it. Now, I want to show you a painting of the batter, Battle of uh, Bunker Hill. Here's the Battle of Bunker Hill. Bunch of white guys, right? Unless you know where to look right here. That's Peter Salem. He was actually the hero of the battle. It doesn't look like he's a hero there. He looks like he's cowering behind the white guy with a sword. He was the hero of the battle. And he saved scores of American lives that day. Why don't we know this? Look at the picture of the Battle of Lexington. 150 Americans. There it is. Do you see any faces of color in this painting? They were all members of the Reverend Jonas Clark's church. They went out. They were actually, if I'm not mistaken, David, they were in, they were in church at the time, right? He, he called them together at church, okay. yes. Okay, so uh, we called together at church and then said, let's go. And they went to defend their town. When the shot heard around the world was over that day, there were American, 18 Americans lying on the ground. What you don't see in this painting are the equal number of whites and blacks. They were white and black patriots. It was a mixed church. Did you even know that happened? One of those injured patriots on the ground in this painting was a black man named Prince Estabrook. I bet you never heard of Prince Estabrook before. How about the uh, painting of George Washington crossing the Delaware? Bunch of white guys, right? No. Look here, African-American, helping row the boat across. You know what his name was? Prince Whipple. He fought alongside Washington during the Revolution. Take a look at this one, this uh, painting of, uh, this is uh, the uh, Marquis uh, de Lafayette. He, if you look at this, you just think, oh yeah, and then he had, he made his slave dress up like I, I don't know what. But that's what you would think, right? This guy is incredibly important. This guy may have won the Revolutionary War. James Armistead was his name. How did he win the Revolutionary War? Double spy. I'm going to let David tell the story here in a minute, but basically the Brits thought that he was spying for them, but he was spying for General Washington. He'd give the Brits bad intel and reveal the good critical information to General Washington. Did you know this story? Why? I, I'm, I'm so tired of people saying, well, it was just the white people, white people, white people. No, no. Why are we intentionally leaving others out? There are black founders. Let me ask the, let me ask the audience. How many of you can name one person of these pictures? Only one. How many can name only one? Most people, right? Am I mistaken saying it's Frederick Douglass? Okay. How many can name two of the people here? We've got six, eight people. How many can name three? Four. 
How many can name four? One. And that's David Barton's wife. <laughs> David, come on up. This is our good friend David Barton. He is the founder and president of Wall Builders, also author of uh, Setting the Record Straight, uh, American History in Black and White. Come on up and, and sit here. Uh, we also have Lucas Morell. Lucas is a professor at Washington and Lee University in Virginia. Welcome. Um, and he is also the author of Lincoln's Sacred Effort. Okay. David, let me. Where, where do we start? Maybe we should. Maybe we should start with uh, James Armistead. Yeah, the spy. It, it's a great one because James Armistead, after the Battle of Richmond, he's in Virginia, and a lot of the battles did not happen in Virginia. But after the Siege of Richmond, he's there. He sees what the British have done in his home state, and he goes to enlist. He said, "I want to. I want to help." And he, he really, I don't know why, but he liked Lafayette. He went to Lafayette, young French general, 19 years old. Said, "I want to. I want to fight with you." And so they make this agreement. And what happens is James Armistead goes over to Benedict Arnold's camp. He's a British general then, traitor British general. And, and he says, oh, they, they, these mean Americans, they mistreat me. Uh, I, I've escaped as a slave. Please let me stay with you. And, and Arnold says, okay, you can wait on us. And so he, he is part of, of Benedict Arnold's staff waiting on Benedict Arnold. And Arnold's one of the generals, which means he meets with all the other generals. So he's meeting with Cornwallis all the time. And, and so James Armistead is just serving them and, and doing all the right stuff and just picking up intelligence like crazy. Every day he gets back with Lafayette says, here's what they're doing. Here's where they're going. Here, here's what they're going to do next. And he kept feeding the information back. And Cornwallis in this time got really comfortable with James and said, you know, I, I don't want to ask you to do something you don't want to do, but would you consider being a spy against your, your former guys there, the Americans? Would you be a British spy and, and, and tell us what they're doing? He said, yeah, I, I guess if you want me to, I will. You know, if you're going to force me to, I will. So he, he goes back. It'd be tough getting across uh, the lines, though, but I'll risk yeah, it for I'll, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll try it. Right. So he ends up saying, yeah, I'll do it. And what happens is when they leave Richmond, they decide that they're going to down to Yorktown and they're going to go down there. So what happens is Armistead's fed all that information to Washington Lafayette. They're going to Yorktown and he's let the British know that, oh, there's no Americans around down there. It's a real safe place to go. The Americans are elsewhere. So the British drop, the, the British fleet drops the soldiers off in Yorktown and the fleet takes off because there's no Americans around. Right then, the French fleet came in and blockaded the port so the British couldn't get their ships back. And now we've got all the American troops waiting for them when they got up. They're pinned in on the peninsula. I can't go anywhere. So he probably cut months, maybe years off the revolution by what he did. Now, it's really cool. He, he liked Lafayette so much that he went back and got his name changed legally from James Armistead to, to James Lafayette. He, he loved Lafayette. And so Lafayette left America in 1784, went back to France. He came back here in 1824 for his farewell tour. Last time he's going to be in America, he's an old man. Uh, there's a painting of Lafayette that hangs inside the, the House chambers, the U.S. Congress of Lafayette, the old man on his farewell tour. And everywhere Lafayette went, there were hundreds of thousands of Americans lying on the road. When he went through Richmond 40 years later, he looked over and spotted his old friend James right in the crowd picked him out, called him a name. They went and hugged and embraced, and, and it was really cool. Why, why do we not know this story? Or, or, um, because really, you talk to African Americans, and they'll say, well, I mean, I, I think I had Al Sharpton say this to me. Will you give me somebody like Rosa Parks up there? He said this about the, these yeah. three gentlemen. Yeah. You get rid of all the, the white guys. You give me somebody like Rosa Parks up there. Why don't you have any color there? And that's what there, prompted there is, this show. Plenty. There is. But there is. Why leave people like this out? Uh, let, me, let me give an example of, of how well we used to know this. You, you know, the, the, the painting you showed of Washington crossing the Delaware, this, this little jewel right here. You mentioned that this is Oliver Cromwell, and, and he, he is. But up here are Prince Whipple, but the other one's Oliver Cromwell. There's actually two blacks in the front of that boat, and they served not as slaves. They were free men who served with Washington on the general staff throughout the revolution from start to finish. Now, this painting that you showed was done in 1851 by a German, mm -hmm. and it was done in Europe. It wasn't done in America. It was done in Europe to show the Europeans, here's what the American Revolution looked like, which meant back then we knew blacks were involved. Whites were involved. At the back of the boat, there's actually a, a lady dressed up in men's clothes. Yeah, put showing. this back up. Put, this, put, put the uh, uh, George Washington crossing the Delaware over. Um, because I, I find it interesting because I, I, I looked into the, the history of this uh, as well. See, so they believe what he did was 
<laughs> Go ahead and I, point I it out. I heard this, right. is the, this is the lady, but who are you saying? Right there, right there. The, that's the lady. Right here. Right there. Yeah, and yeah, and okay. the two guys up front, uh, the very front guy, Oliver Cromwell, and you pointed to Prince Whipple behind him but there. I mean, th th this was done to show Europe, hey, here's what America did in the revolution. Right. Everybody came together. We don't show that today. I mean, it used to be that we knew this. This book right here is an old textbook from 1855. It's a great book. It's written by a black historian, a first black appointed federal office. It's called The Colored Patriots of the American Revolution. Now, we studied that as a textbook. That is not a skinny little book that, that we have there. I mean, there's a lot of patriots in the American Revolution that we studied.